market access is at $200.89 a share. Well, it's probably moved up some today, but that's what it was at yesterday after market. Yahoo analysts estimate they can move up to $244 a share in the next 12 months. Hey guys, today we have a previous entry on our watch list. It has actually been there two other times before, but it's dropped back to its 52-week low. And that is Market Access Holdings, Inc. Now, this company is a three-star. I like to break the stocks on my watch list down into three tiers that is three stars the most fundamentally sound two stars little belief that and one star the least most fundamentally or the least fundamentally sound but still fundamentally sound enough to be on the watch list market access holdings is a three star now previously I rated them as a two star but when I look at the fundamentals again today I have to change that I change that rating to a three star they have an earnings report dropping on July 18th or the week of that's a little distant away so we don't have to worry about it right now but we know an earnings report is sort of like going to a casino. It can come out great and the stock price can jump up. It can come out um, bad and the stock price can really drop. So if you have a stock that you buy and that stock starts to move up some, you made some money on it an unrealized gain because you haven't sold it yet I wouldn't be as afraid of the earnings report because if the earnings report comes out and it's bad you may just end up losing some or all of the gains you've already made but if you're just about to buy it and the earnings report is coming out in maybe three days or whatever you have to be prepared for what's going to happen. Um, I've been pretty fortunate. I've had a few that I've held on to through earnings when I just bought them. And it worked out well for me. One being Zoetis. One I missed was United Health, which really jumped. But there's others which I avoided a lot of pain by being out of them. And what I did is I, I sat out of them. They came up, the earnings report came out, they dropped dramatically. And then once they dropped dramatically, I bought them as they started to move back up. But in any event, we're gonna jump. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mention something. Market access is at $200.89 a share. Well, it's probably moved up some today, but that's what it was at yesterday after market. Yahoo analysts estimate they can move up to $244 a share in the next 12 months. So we're going to jump into the analysis on this company, but before doing that, I just want to mention a couple of things. And one is that the stocks that I analyze and find fundamentally sound and at their annual low price, I actually add them to my watch list. And those stocks on my watch list, I mention them as they're starting to move up in this week's stock winners which is a weekly series that I put out that you can find on my channel Uncle Dwayne's watch list and from those I pick one particular stock 
that I see moving up quickly or feel is going to move up quickly and put that out in this month's option pick so that you can take advantage of because as we know if you own the option it's going to move a lot quicker than the stock. If you own the stock it can be moving up 2-3% a day um, right now, another company I'm talking about, Savista Bank, they moved up 5% today, and that's unusual. They're moving up pretty well, but it's not unusual for an option. On a regular day, an option can move up 20% in one day, 30% in one day if it's a good day but the same way it can move up 20 or 30 percent if that stock is going down it can move down 20 or 30 percent in a day as well so you have to be careful when you're dealing with options and i have a few videos on the channel explaining what options are, what I call options, what I put options. But in any event, it's time to jump into the analysis on this video. Okay, so we're looking at Market Access Holdings Inc. Ticker symbol is MKTX. And we're going to start off by looking at our earnings per share. In 2019, their earnings per share was $5.40. 2020, $7.85. It actually increased. It was COVID lockdown year. 2021, $6.77. 2022, $6.65. So for these, 21, it dropped. 22, it dropped. Uh, a little bit more by 12 cents and then 2023 six dollars and 85 cents so it increased but 10 cents from the previous year the earnings per share look pretty decent to me but this is a fast growing company look at the kind of We'll see the kind of money they're making and then see what the stock price is. Now, there are companies that are making billions in sales and revenue, but their stock price isn't the kind of stock price that market access is. But, and the reason their stock price is so high is because of what they have the potential to make. You'll generally see that, but you'll see smaller companies with very high stock prices, maybe 200, maybe 300, maybe 400, but the stock price is going up so fast because people are seeing the potential of what this company can make and they're buying into the stock. And we're going to see that. But we saw 2023's earnings per share was $6.85. So far, Yahoo is projecting the earnings per share for 2024 to be $6.84. Now, the year isn't over. We're just in May. So by the time we get to December, by the time the year ends, that earnings per share may drop. That earnings per share may increase, but currently it's projected at $6.84. Now we're going to look at the high and the low prices for this stock over the previous five years. And we see in 2019, the low price of the stock 
was $199.07. The high price was $404.45. The low price in 2020, our COVID lockdown year, was $272.16. The high price was $573.14. So, if you notice 2019, the increase from the low price to the high price was 103.17% return on your money. And in 2020, it was 110.59% return on your money. A lot of investments were not so well in 2020. That's a pretty decent return. In 2021, the low price was $335.61 a share. The high price was $563.22 a share. That's a return of 67.82% return on your money. In 2022, the low price was 215 dollars and 41 this and 41 cent per share the high price was 387 dollars and 46 cents per share that's a 79.87 percent return on your money and in 2023 the low price was 200 dollars and 43 cents a share the high price was $387.67 a share. That was a 93.42% return on your money. Now, if we look at the projection for 2024, the low price is $200.89 currently, that was yesterday, and it's moving up a little today. The high price by Yahoo Analysts is projected to be $244. Remember, this is just a projection. The high price may end up lower. The high price may end up higher. I do projections on stock prices myself, but I use just P-E ratios. And when I do that, I usually use the most conservative estimate so that people aren't waiting for something to happen that's not going to happen. I'm not sure what Yahoo analysts use when they do their projections, but they may be doing the same thing. $244 may be the conservative estimate for the year for it. But in any event, we notice that in the last five years, the lowest percentage increase between the stock's low price and the high price was 67.82%. Two years, they even made over 100%. Yet, if we look at where the stock price is now, or where it was yesterday, and where Yahoo Analyst project is going to go up to, it's only a 21.46% return as compared to a 67.82% return, which is the lowest in the last five years of where this stock has been. In any event, we're going to go out and look at the, the uh, income statement but before doing that, I want to look at the free cash flow yield for the stock. 
Free cash flow yields is a new figure I've started adding to my analysis. We cover cash flow later on. And generally with free cash flow yields, around this time, your well, most of the um, I should say specialists that I've heard would speak on it. They expect us to look for a free cash flow yield of around 5% to um, challenge bonds or whatever the case is. This company gives a free cash flow yield of 3.52%. Not exactly high, but I'd say that's pretty decent. I generally don't make the decision on whether or whether or not to buy a stock based on free cash flow yield. I just feel it was a helpful metric to add in my analysis. So Let's look at the income statement. And in 2019, this company made $511,352,000. Like I said, I've seen companies making billions. So that's not much it is much 511 million isn't a small amount of money but this company's making a lot more but after paying all expenses they retained 204 million 902,000 that is a 40.07 percent profit margin. That's what's impressive. Generally with a profit margin that high, you'd expect it to be some type of technology company where they don't spend as much on expenses. But this is a bank. I mean, I'm sorry, not a bank. They deal in investing. But they're making a 40.07% return. That is impressive. In 2020, our COVID lockdown year, even higher sales and revenue, they made 689125000 Of that, after paying expenses, they retained two hundred and ninety nine million three hundred and seventy seven thousand. That is a forty three point forty four percent return. In twenty twenty one, they made six hundred and ninety eight million nine hundred and fifty one thousand in sales and revenue. Of that they retain two hundred and fifty seven million eight hundred and eighty eight thousand. That is a thirty six point nine zero percent profit margin. Now the profit margin dropped in twenty twenty one, twenty two and twenty three, but 36%, I'd still consider that pretty good. 2022, they made 718,300,000. Of that, they retained 250,224,000. That was a 34.84% return. And in 2023, they made 
547,000. Of that, they retained 258,055,000. That was a return or profit margin of 34.29%. Now notice all five years, their sales and revenue increased from 511,352,000 to 752,547,000 in five years. But having said that, let's take a look at their return on equity and their debt to equity. And I really like their return on equity. In 2019, it was 26.61%. In 2020, 31.35%. 2021, 24.77%. 2022, 23.15%. And 2023, it was the lowest year, 19.96%. But still pretty decent for a return on equity. And their debt to equity, to me it was phenomenal all of it was under 100%, I say you should keep it like under 200%. Banks generally go higher, but they were all under 100%. 24% in 2019, 39.41% in 2020, 38.41% in 2021, 48.1%. 72% in 2022 and 55.85% in 2023. So it is increasing each year, but not significantly, and it's still under 100%. It was actually under um, 50% for every year except for the last one. And if we look at our balance sheet, we like to see the current assets exceeding the current liabilities. Well, the current assets exceed the current liabilities all five years, and it exceeds them significantly for the first year and more than doubles them for like the second year. We also like to see the total assets exceeding the total liabilities, and that's even more important for us. And we see the total assets pretty much doubling the total liabilities for all years except for maybe 23. This company does pay a dividend and they paid seventy six million two hundred and thirty one thousand in dividends in twenty nineteen ninety million five hundred and sixty six thousand in twenty twenty ninety nine million seven hundred and ninety two thousand in twenty twenty one a hundred and five million nine hundred and forty two thousand in twenty twenty two and a hundred and nine million six hundred and fifty eight thousand twenty twenty three. So they're paying more out in dividends every year 
But at the same time, in every year except 2023, they're actually buying back more shares of their own stock. Now, we know as investors, we love to see when a company is buying back more shares of their stock. We hate to see when they're selling more shares of their stock. Well, this company bought back more shares in four to five years. In 2019, they bought 16,049,000 worth. 2020, they bought 17,128,000 worth. I'm sorry, not 17, 12,128,000 worth. In 2021, they bought 56,093,000 worth. 2022, they bought 86,868,000 worth. But in 2023, they bought, oh, I'm sorry, they sold 940,000 worth. So they sold a little more in 23. Just 940,000. Now we're coming down to the free cash flow. And that free cash flow is the money the company's gonna have at the end of the year. I'd like to see the free cash flow, see if it's positive or negative, but I'd really like to see if the company pays a dividend what the free cash flow is and what it ends up as because the dividend is actually paid from the free cash flow if the company is going to pay out let's say a billion in dividend that year but they only have five hundred thousand in free cash flow they really can afford to pay that dividend and they're probably just paying it just to keep you attracted to their stock. But they can't afford to pay you that dividend. They may be borrowing money just to pay you that dividend. So, in 2019, market access free cash flow was 231235000 After paying the dividend, they still had 115400000 000. In 2020, their free cash flow was 358861000 After paying the dividend, they still had 268,295,000. In 2021, their free cash flow was 231,475,000. After paying the dividend, they still had 131,683,000. Their free cash flow was 237359000 After paying the dividends, they still had 131417000 000. And in 2023, their free cash flow was 281319000 After paying the dividends, they still had 171,661,000. So this is a company that I would definitely put in that category of being able to afford the dividend that they're paying you. Now, the, when we're looking at beta, the general market moves at a beta of one that means how volatile is the stock how much does it move 
anything with a beta greater than one moves more than the market. Anything with a beta of less than one moves less than the market. This stock is less than one. Its beta is 0 0.96. So it moves at a beta of less than one, but only slightly. 0 0.96. So we could say that this stock almost moves at about the same pace as the market. The book value, which lets us know if the company was suddenly shut down overnight, what would our shares be worth? The book value is $34.12. For a PB ratio of 5.89. Now I have a video on the channel that is the truth about book value. I don't really count on book value as a figure, and I explain why in that video. I don't, as long as it's not a negative number, I don't find it to be so relevant what I look at more is is the company buying back shares of its own stock or selling shares of its stock every year and we already looked at that but having said that the last dividend that this company made was 70 was 74 cents a share with a dividend yield of 1.47. Now, there are 37,600,000, yeah, 37,600,000 outstanding shares of this stock on the market. Of that, 2.33% is owned by insiders, those who work for or are involved with the company. 2.33 sounds like a small number, but 2.33% of 37.6 million is not necessarily a small number. I would say that's pretty decent for insiders. And I get these statistics from Yahoo. I, I'm confused as to why they do this. But in any event, the amount of these shares owned by large banks and institutions, 103.24%. I'm not sure how you get over 100%. But what I do know is anytime I look at a stock on there and I see it's over 100%, that means it can really move. One of the stocks I've looked at move most, I maybe got it for like $40 in the $40 range. It moved up to the $60 range in like a month or two. It was Ollie Bargain Outlet. And it had over hundred percent on the institutions so for the stocks that are rated on Yahoo to be over a hundred percent by institutions I keep a watch on them in any event Mr. Christopher Robert Concanon born 1967 maybe he's around 57, is the CEO, interim CFO, and director. And he was appointed CEO in April of 2023. So recent, you may want to keep an eye to make sure the company is still going in the right direction. 
because he's new in this particular job. Market access is in the capital markets industry, financial services sector. Market access is in the capital markets, capital markets industry, financial services sector. So that's it for our analysis on market access, guys. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Have a great day.